I found that we have fear for a reason. There's a reason you're scared of fire, right? There's a reason you're scared of height. There's a reason you're scared of snakes. Can I get an amen? And lightning and storm. There's a reason for that. It's, a, it's, what's what, it's what my daddy would call a healthy fear. There, it's this thing like don't do something dumb, okay? This, this fear. But I'm not talking about that kind of fear today. I want to talk about the overwhelming, consuming, debilitating type of fear. The Bible calls it a spirit of fear. Everybody say that with me, a spirit of fear. And that sounds scary, doesn't it? A spirit of fear. And I think that's why Paul said it that way in Timothy. He wanted us to understand what we were dealing with. Look at what the scripture says. Paul is writing to Timothy. And by the way, Timothy, when you study him, is a timid person. He's a he's anxious, he's fearful, he's insecure. He deals with stomach issues, probably from anxiety and worry. Because Paul tells him, here's how you deal with those stomach issues. So he's someone that deals with fear and anxiety all the time. And if you're sitting by someone that, that deals with that, just nudge him right now and say, come on, Timothy, God's got a word for you, just right here. All right? Okay, here we go. So here's what Paul tells him. Paul says, for God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. Paul gives us three keys to overcoming fear. First of all, he said God has not given you a spirit of fear, but he's given you a spirit of power. Come on, let, let some of you, let's, give me, let me have some bad to say power. power. Y'all ain't said that in church ever in your life, have you? Come on. Come on, power. God has given us a spirit of power. What did Jesus say about power? Matthew 18, Matthew 28, 19. Most of you know that scripture. Go ye therefore and baptize them in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. And, but what about 28, 18? My daddy always says when you see a therefore, you need to see what it's there for. Right? So when Jesus says, go therefore and baptize and, and teach nations and baptize them, what's the therefore? Well, here's the preceding scripture. And Jesus came and spoke to them again and said, what? All authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. How much authority? All. I can't hear you. All. all. You know when someone tells me when I say, how you doing today? And they go, all right. I say, you know what all right means, right? 100% right. It's not all right. It's all right, man. Everything is great. Well, this is what Jesus is saying. He said, all power has been given unto me. Because of his death, burial, and resurrection, all power has been given unto him. So I'm not a great mathematician, but I do know this. If he has all power, then how much does the enemy have? Come on. Y'all better be better math mathematicians than that. The enemy has no power whatsoever. Do you know if we could get that into our brain and into our heart, we would live a much fruitful life. Amen? Amen. The enemy has absolutely no power. And then look at what Jesus does with the power that he has. How many can tell me? If you've been around the hills, you know. He gave it to us. So not only does the enemy have no power, now Jesus takes the power that he has and he gives it to his children. Yeah. How many are starting to feel better about yourself already? Yeah. Matthew 10 and 1, and he called his 12 disciples to him and he gave them power over unclean spirits to cast them out, to heal all kinds of sickness and all kinds of disease. Luke 10, 19, behold, I give you authority or power to trample on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy and nothing shall by any means hurt you. Notice when Jesus said he would give us power, it, it was over all the things that we fear. Sickness, disease, serpents, unclean spirits, scorpions. And yet he says, I'm going to give you power over all these things. I want you to write this down. It's not that we don't have the power, it's that we don't know we have the power. Should I say that again? It's not that we don't have the power. It's that we do not know we have the power. And the enemy knows that. And that's why the enemy fought you to get here today. 
Did you know as soon as you make a decision that you're going to go to church and you're going to have a change in your life and you're going to get your family up a little earlier and instead of instead of heading out early to the Titans game or whatever you do, you're going to, we're going to make a commitment today and go to the house of God. Do you know as soon as you make that declaration, as soon as the enemy, as soon as the enemy hears you say, how about we go to church tomorrow? He goes overtime. Just right, putting everything in your path to keep you from showing up. Especially when the pastor declares on social media, I'm preaching on fear. He does not want you to be here because he does not want you to hear this word. And I can tell you, I know when the enemy doesn't want you to hear because I didn't sleep a wink last night. Just up all night. And I know it. Like, you don't like this. Don't matter. We're still going to preach it anyway. I'm going to put toothpicks right here in my eyes, and we're just going to go two services together. <laughs> Look at your neighbor and say, the enemy does not want you to know that you have the power. Keep looking at them. Say, but you do. Come on. That's a good word right there, isn't it? You have the power because of the blood, the word, and the name of Jesus Christ. You have the power that you need to defeat the spirit of fear. Now, before we're done, we're going to talk about, okay, I've got, now I know it. Now, what do I, what do, I do about it? Hold up. Don't get ahead of me. We've got to get to the second key. The second key that Paul gives us to overcome fear is love. Love. Look at what 1 John 4.18 says. There is no fear in love. But perfect love casts out fear because fear involves torment. How many would agree with that? Fear, that's what fear is all about. It torments you. It keeps you up at night. Saying, what if you made a mistake? What if you shouldn't have done that? What if she runs out on you like the last one did? What if your kids? What if? What if? Amen? Amen. And for some reason, for me, it, when the Lord moves on me to pray, it's always 3 o'clock in the morning. I do not know why he picks 3 a.m. And I, I'll tell him, I'll say, you are, you are omnipotent, omnipresent. You never sleep, the Bible says. Why you got to wake me up at 3? Couldn't we do this at 9 a.m.? 9 a.m. would be a good time for me. But he picks 3 a.m., but I can tell you when I know the enemy's doing something, it's always 4 a.m. 4 a.m., why do I, I don't know why, it may not be for you, but for me it is 4 a.m., and I just lay in the bed with my eyes open, and I'm just thinking about it, and brain is just going. And, and if it goes long enough, heart starts going. Come on, is that just the pastor today that deals with some of that? If you deal with some of that, maybe not at 4 a.m., but you deal with some of that, all right, that's what we're talking about getting rid of today, Okay. I'm going to give you some keys to run that thing out of your house. And the greatest one, the Bible says, the greatest of everything is love. We want power, right? Well, he gives us power, but there is so much power in love. And John said this, fear is chased out by love. Listen to what I'm about to tell you. Love and fear cannot coexist. Now, love and respect can, but not love and fear. Because once love shows up, fear has to leave. Let me give you a great example of that. I've told the story. I won't go into the full story. But my mom one morning woke me up screaming. We were living in Natchez, Mississippi. And I don't know, I was maybe eight years old. Woke me up just screaming, John, John, John. That sounds like a bad imitation. Don't let her know I did that. But John, my dad was going to work. John, 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 there's a mouse in the den, I, w I will give you $20 if you will kill it. Now, that was, I, Lord, that was 30, I don't know how many years ago. I'm 50 now, so that was 40 years ago. And that was a lot of money then, right? And now it's, I'll give you $20 if you'll kill it. But I was up, like, because I'm scared of mice too, all right? But I had me a broom, and I found that thing and went to town on it, all right? And Mom is standing over on a chair like, ah! Well, then I've told you the same, another story about uh, a little while later, I come walking around the corner of our house, and there's a rabid dog that comes out from one of our storage sheds, th throbbing at the mouth, coming at me. My mom comes out the back door with a broom <laughs> and runs the dog away. Now, what just happened? How can she be so fearful of a mouse but no fear of a dog? Love. Her love for her boy said, uh-uh, <laughs> ain't going to happen in my backyard. That is exactly what you and I need to tap into, to have this understanding that we have a heavenly father that loves us so much 
Look at your neighbor, your second favorite neighbor, and say, you need a revelation of God's love. Look at them. I didn't say have a conversation, y'all. I just said, <laughs> I'm so sorry I didn't pick you first. And I'm, uh... <laughs> perfect love casts out fear. Everybody say perfect love. And I can hear some of you right now saying, but there is no perfect love but God's love. I've been married 26 years, and my love for her is still not perfect. I'm working on it. I want it to be, but it's not perfect. Right? I'm Right, Kristen? Amen? You can amen, baby. <laughs> I'm working. I mess up. I keep a record of wrong. Right? I, I, if I compare it to 1 Corinthians 13, I'm way behind on what real perfect love is supposed to be. So there's no perfect love but God's love. That is why we need a revelation of God's love. Yeah. Right. Right. Ephesians 3.18, Paul said, And may you have the power to understand, as all God's people should, how wide, how long, how high, and how deep his love is. And not just understand. Then he says, May you experience the love of Christ. Though it is too great to understand fully, then you will be made complete with all the fullness of life and power that comes from God. An understanding of God's love. For me to have this understanding, when I'm in those night terrors, I'm having those that stressed out moment, when I can understand, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. If he would do that back then, why wouldn't he do that today? His love has not changed. It goes on and on and on. It never changes. But what about when I mess up? He still loves you. Look at what Paul says in Romans. Am I reading too much scripture today? It doesn't matter, y'all. I'm going to read them anyway. What if y'all said yes and I just went home? You hit my quota today, Pastor. Uh, Romans 8 and 35, who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall trouble or hardship or persecution or famine or nakedness or danger or sword? Notice Paul lists all these things that we fear. Trouble, hardship, persecution, famine, famine, nakedness, danger or sword. And then he writes, no, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. Listen, notice what he says, in all these things. Not when all of these things are gone you become a conqueror. Not when God gets them out of your life, you become a conqueror. No, in the middle of these things, you are a conqueror. Come on, somebody need to hear that right there. Because some of you are praying for God to take the storm away, and God is saying, I want to do a miracle in the middle of the storm. I want you to look back one day and go, I was a conqueror right in the middle of the worst time of my life. Boy, that was, I needed a bigger amen than that one. Come on, I want you to get this today. We are not, and we're not just conquerors. I love it. It says we are what? More than conquerors. How do you become more than a conqueror? Through him that loved us. A revelation of his love. A conqueror. So what keeps you? How many of you would just be honest with me today and say most days you do not feel like a conqueror, much less more than a conqueror? What keeps you from being a conqueror? Fear. If love makes you a conqueror and perfect love casts out all fear, what makes you feel less than a conqueror? Fear. The fear of, I'm, I'm not going to be able to do it. The fear of, I'm not good enough. The fear of, and we just go down the line, down the line, down the line. And what I've found is when I am in a moment of fear, I need to remember his love for me. Because if I wasn't fearful, I'd be a conqueror every day. Right? If there was no fear, we would all just be walking around with trophies and medals. We'd just be conquering everything. So how do I overcome that fear? Understanding that I have a father who loves me, and if I'm in this situation, it means he knows I can handle it. Yeah. Now look, if you do stupid stuff and end up in a situation, don't say, God put me here because I can handle it. No, you made a dumb decision, okay? <laughs> Don't put that back on God. But what I found is even when I make a dumb decision, God has a way of redeeming that moment, even in those kind of things. And nothing, everybody say nothing, nothing can separate me from his love. 
And what is more, he goes on to say in Romans 8 and 38, For I am convinced that neither death nor life nor angels nor demons nor the present nor the future nor any powers nor height nor depth or anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Love. Cast out all fear. And then Paul gives us a third key, and that is a sound mind. How many just love the, set, the sound of that? A sound mind. Some of you during the power, you're like, okay. During the love, you're like, yeah, all right. But when I said sound mind, you went, ah, oh, it feels so good. Just like, just restful. You know that word sound mind means this, a secure mind. A safe mind. A, a safe and sound. I've referenced my dad a couple times today. If you haven't met my dad, you need to meet him. He's a man among men. He's the strongest man I know. He's the man of integrity. And today, yesterday as I was doing message prep, I was thinking about that, that word, a secure mind. And it took me back to when I would, my mom and dad would say our prayers and I would go to bed and I'd be laying in the bed and all of a sudden I'd hear dad walk with those big old footsteps down the hall and I'd hear him start locking the doors. Locking all the doors of the house, pulling the curtains too. My mom calls it putting the bed, the house to sleep. You see, getting, getting everything set and ready. And there was something about me when I heard that last door lock, I'd go, ah. I told Kristen and the boys that, and the boys said, we feel the same way, Dad. Evan's 21 and is squatting 340 now. And he's like, I, they, I think he could handle anybody that showed it. Matter of fact, I'd be like, Evan, come get this dude, all right? <laughs> take him, Evan Davis, take him out, all right? Uh, but, but these boys, they're big boys, but even now, when they're at home and I'm traveling away, Evan says, I don't quite sleep as easy as I do when you're in the house. Yeah. Come on, that's the kind of sound mind God wants you to have. Yeah. He wants you to have that feeling like, all right, he's got it taken care of, everything's locked up, everything's shut down, it's a sound mind fear, you have no place here. Yeah. How many want a sound mind? Yeah. Now, look, I'm not talking about you're nudging your neighbor and saying, you crazy, you need this. I'm talking about... That worrisome mind, that stressful mind, that mind that's overreacting and always going. And let me help you with that today as, as we bring this to the home stretch. What brings us a sound mind? Philippians 4 and 7 says, And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds through Christ Jesus. I love that word guard because, you know, when you think a word about the word peace, you kind of see it in your hippie flowers, you know. Peace and glitter. But when you read this, it has peace as a centurion, as a soldier, packing heat, multiple heat, multiple ammo belts. I mean, this is what we're talking about here. A centurion that stands there and says, no, you will not enter this mind. You will not enter this heart. What are the two ways that God speaks to us personally? Of course, we know God speaks to us through his word. We know God speaks to us through our apostles and, and pastors and teachers and evangelists. We understand that. But the way that God speaks to you personally is two ways. Through your mind, through your heart. Your mind, it'll drop a thought, right? Through your heart, you'll get a feeling, these emotions. How many know what I'm talking about? You, you've had that before, that, these inclinations, the, the, the gifts of the Spirit. That's how, that's how the Lord speaks to us directly many times. Well, doesn't it make sense that that would be the two ways the enemy would attack you? Yeah. That is an onslaught on your emotions, an onslaught on your mind. But the Scripture says the peace of God will guard them, will secure them. And you don't have to understand it because it passes all understanding. I love what Paul says in Colossians 3.15. And if you've been around me, if I've ever counseled you before, if we've been in the lobby and you say, I'm walking through something, I need to make a decision, whatever, you've heard me quote Colossians 3.15, and let the peace of God rule in your heart. That word rule has two meanings, like a king, like a monarch that stands there and goes, no, I'm setting the tone, I'm setting the culture, I'm setting the laws. Fear, you have no right here. And it also means like a judge to say yes or no. If you ever need to make a decision in your life and you're a Jesus Christ follower, after you've sought counsel, after you've asked people and you've prayed about it, I would give you this, this advice. Just listen to that good old gut feeling. 
I'm not talking about the gut feeling that you make mistakes with, all right? I, I'm not talking about listening to your, your heart that is, that is uh, wicked and will mess you up and get you all kinds of stuff. I'm talking about that spirit that is inside of you that all of a sudden it'll just be this peaceful feeling that goes, this is good. This is good, right? That was a good word for someone right there. So how do we get the peace of God? Raise your hand if you want to know this. All right, I want to sound mine. I know i got to get the peace of God. How do I get it? Raise your hand if you want to see it. One, two, three, just making sure. I'm counting the ones that are not raising your hand because don't come talk to me next week when you're walking through it, all right? Because I'm giving it to you right now. Now you can come talk to me and I'll send you to Kristen, okay? We just read Philippians 4 and 7. But I want to look at the preceding verse, Philippians 4 and 6. How do I get the peace of God? You ready? Here we go. Don't worry about anything. Instead, pray about everything. Don't you? Isn't that just the simplest thing in the world? Like, wait, there's got to be something more. Put on worship music and light the right candle. It's, it's even better if you're wearing a white three-button suit, okay? That's much better. Get everything right. You know, no, it's just this. How do I get the peace of God? Don't worry about anything. Pray about everything. And then here it comes. And then the peace of God, which passes all understanding, will guard your hearts and mind through Christ Jesus. He is not. He does not. The, the peace of God does not have liberty to guard your heart and mind if you're still worrying and not praying. So don't. I'm, I'm telling you, you're wasting your breath if you're saying, help me with this, but you're not praying about it. And if you're saying, help me with this, but you're still worrying about it. I used to tell Kristen this, and it's one of those things that just went over very well, okay? That was, that was, it did not go over very well. I'm going to help some husbands today. She'd be talking about something. I said, can you do anything about it? She said, no. I said, then don't worry about it. If you can't do anything about it, why are you worrying about it? Which is not a loving way to say it at all. Thank God I found this scripture. Amen. Now it's just like, baby... Philippians 4, 6, don't worry about it, pray about it. And he says, when you do this, the peace of God will guard your heart and mind. How many ever had that peace show up like that, where it just comes? Amen? Let me ask you this. How many have had that peace leave just as quick as it came? <laughs> I know as a pastor I'm not supposed to say that, but it's the truth. I can be walking in such peace, like, ah, oh, this is great. And one thing happens, and peace is like a dove. Just out, gone. Right? So I want to help us get the peace and keep the peace. Amen? How, how many want to get the peace and keep the peace? All right, then let's keep reading it. Philippians 4.8. We've read Philippians 4, 6, and 7, 4, 8. Finally, brothers, whatever is true, noble, right, pure, lovely, admirable, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think about such things. In other words, think about these things. Quit thinking about the other stuff. Stop watching stuff that makes your brain do what it does. Don't quit listening to things that make, quit scrolling when all you're doing is comparing yourself to other people. And the worry and the stress hits in. He said, if you will, if you want the real peace of God, think on these things. Kristen's been walking around our house lately. We've had quite a two weeks, and, and she's walking around our house lately just quoting Isaiah 26 and 3. You will keep in perfect peace all who trust in you, all whose thoughts are fixed on you. Fixed. Listen, in this world of instant gratification, and in this world of ADD entertainment, we, we need to learn some focus. There needs to be some focus. Where, we're, where as soon as that, that worry starts coming in, no, 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 I'm focusing on what is good. I'm focusing on what is admirable. I'm, I didn't sleep last night. I told you guys this. And, and we've been having things going on. And I, my brain was going today. And, and I woke up this morning and, and Kristen had some hot tea for me. And I walked in. And most of the time I'd walk in and go, I did not sleep a wink last night. That's how I would have started my day. But after really prepping for this message, I walked in and I said, this is the day the Lord has made. I'm going to rejoice and be glad in it. It is a good day. It is a great day. And I didn't sleep a wink last night. <laughs> but I started it with some positivity. Amen? Come on, I want to help you when worry starts coming in. Take your thought and fix it back on something that's admirable and good. We had years ago, many of you heard the story, years ago we had 
a, a man flying to Nashville and gave us a brand new Lincoln Zephyr. We needed a car so bad. And, uh, it's an incredible story. Gave it brand new, had 26 miles on it. And, man, we just loved that car. Well, uh, we talked about it. We bragged about it. Well, my dad had had uh, someone break into his, his house, and they stole a whole bunch of stuff out of his tool shed. Dad wouldn't care if they stole stuff out of the house, but they stole stuff out of his tool shed. It was like, let's go, baby. We're about to hurt somebody. And so my mom w was watching Davis that day, and she was holding Davis by the hand, and my mom was telling someone about it. She's like, man, they, they came in. They stole everything we had. It's just, just gone. It's all gone. We don't know what we're going to do. And Davis started tugging on her, tugging on her. She said, yeah, baby. He said, but tell them about the Winkin' Zephyr. As soon as worry starts coming and you want to start focusing on the negativity, fix your mind back on something. Look at what Corinthians says. Take captive every thought and make it obedient to Christ. As soon as that thought comes into your mind, you grab it, hog tie that thing, clear, here we go. Take it captive. And fix your eyes back on something that's admirable, something that is praiseworthy, something that is truth. I'm going to tell you another way to focus is worship. Just worship. Worship changes the atmosphere. We, it just happened just a moment ago. The spirit of the Lord, the atmosphere is changing because God's people start worshiping. And you don't have to wait till Sunday to do that. Just put on a worship song. Come on, just turn it on. I tell our boys all the time, mess with your playlist a little bit, all right? Instead of all the stuff you listen to, every once in a while, have a playlist that's just worship stuff. By the way, now you can listen to Kanye and worship, all right? I'm just saying. What do you think I listened to on the way to church today, baby? Jesus is king. Let's go. Now, some of you got questions about this. Let me just tell you, Jesus said, some, I'm, this is not even in my notes. Jesus said, if somebody starts talking about me, don't shut them up. Yeah. All right? I don't care what you believe about their lifestyle, okay? Don't shut them up. Let them talk about me. Yeah. All right, that's a free one right there. <laughs> we got to pay for the rest of this? No, you don't have to pay for it. Worship, it brings me back into focus. God's word will bring you back into focus. When you get stressed, come on, open up the Word. I'm going to tell you one of the things that Chris and I do all the time. When we have fear going on, we go to Psalms 91, and we just read it, and then we just leave it open in whatever room we're dealing with anxiety. Yeah. Yeah. If you don't know Psalms 91, I want you to read it today, okay? Today, read it. Write it down. Put it in your notes. Read it in every translation you can find it in. Read it, read it, read it, read it, read it, and get it into your heart and believe it, okay? So how do I keep my mind fixed and focus? Worship the word of God. And then Kristen said, John, you got to say this. Just keep doing it. Just keep focusing. When you don't, you'll have a day that you won't do it. You're going to mess up, right? And you're going to give in to fear. And you're going to give in to worry. Don't, don't do that same thing the next day. Wake up the next day. Oh, messed up then. I'm back into it today. I'm focusing back on it. Yeah. Yeah. And then he says this in verse 9. Whatever you have learned are received, are heard from me, are seen in me, put it into practice. Now, look, at what are we talking about? How do I get a sound mind by getting the peace of God in my life? This is how you do it. You, you, you fix your mind. You, you think about good things. You, you think about positive things. You don't worry about anything. You pray about everything. That's the mindset. But then you can't just pray about it and think about it. You've got to put it into action. What he says? Put it into practice. Yeah. Do it. You can't stay in your house and just pray and stay focused. you got to live your life. Amen? How many would be a lot more peaceful if you didn't have to deal with people? <laughs> Write that down. I'm going to use that in the next service. That was good. We would be so much more peaceful if we were just hermits all by ourselves and we could just zone out, you know, and just focus on the Word of God all the time. And that, But no, we're dealing with people. So how do I keep walking in peace? Put it into practice. Do good stuff. And then watch what happens. Watch what it says. And then the God of peace will be with you. Hold up. Something just changed. What have we been talking about? The peace of God, right? When you pray, when you focus on good things, 
That's when the peace of God shows up. But when you start doing good things, that's when the God of peace shows up. And I don't know about you, I like the peace of God, but I would much rather have the God of peace with me in the boat in the middle of the storm. And then I love what Paul says in Thessalonians. He said, now may the Lord of peace himself give you peace at all times in every way. Look at me. To those of you that are battling with a spirit of fear, I speak peace over you this morning. Well, do you have the authority to do that? Absolutely. God has uh, ordained me and positioned me in this church to be the pastor of this church. And so, yes, so I declare peace over you today. It's not something I'm saying. I believe that something supernatural happens when we start declaring those kind of things. And so I speak peace over you today. But you don't know what I'm dealing with. What are you afraid of? Death. He has the keys. You're afraid of going to hell? He's got the keys of those too. Some of you are afraid of being alone. He said, I will never leave you. I will never forsake you. Yeah. Some of you are afraid of the father, or the, the future. Well, your father's already in the future. He's there. Yeah. You're afraid of messing up like you did in your past. Well, he's there too. He's got it all covered. Everything is taken care of. So I'm going to ask you today, what are you putting your faith in? Because you are either putting your faith in your fear or you're putting your faith in your father. Yeah. Yeah. It's simple. What are you believing? Because what you believe is what you act on. And when you start acting on it, you'll go back and go, okay, your actions are the answer to that question. What are you putting your faith in? Your fear or your father? Look at me. I love the amen from the lobby out there. I love that, the overflow. Come on, y'all give me a good amen. (laughs) All right, I want you to look at me. Chris, I want you to come join me. No, her name's not Kristen, that's Taylor. (laughs) Some of you are like, I thought that was Taylor. I want my wife to join me. Now, you you can have a mic if you want one, it doesn't matter. Yeah, grab that one. Grab a couple of them, like a press conference. (laughs) Oh, we'll get Taylor, yeah. Ah, My baby girl. I want her here with me because I'm going to pray over you today. And those of you that have heard her story... There you go. Those of you that heard her story, uh, Kristen battled with a spirit of fear for many years of our marriage. Seven. Seven years of our marriage, she battled with a spirit of fear. When I mean a, a fear, a debilitating fear. Uh, she thought she was going to catch anything that everyone around. Um, I would have to go, and we traveled in those days, and so we would be in just sketchy hotels, and I'd have to go in and look under the bed, I'd have to look in the closets, and I'd have to do that multiple times. And, and just just debilitating fear. And one day, she told the Lord, she said, I want you to take this from me. And he said, you got to give it to me. And she did. And on 2009 Singing Brook, the Holy Spirit came into that living room and delivered her from the spirit of fear. And so I believe whatever God delivers you from, you have authority to pray for those types of things. So I want those of you that are battling with a spirit of fear, And today, you want power, love, and a sound mind. I want you to stand right where you are. Now, I know you're fearful, and this is going to be hard for you to stand. Well, maybe not. There we go. Okay. I have to say, I believe we all deal deal with it. That's just my personal opinion. Um, so So God asked me to let it go. That means I had to let it go. He couldn't do it for me. doesn't mean he doesn't care, but there's something, there's a spiritual transaction that takes place when you let it go. It says, um, there's so many scriptures running through my head right now. It says, um, what is it? And the peace of God will rule in your hearts. I just read it. I know, but yeah. what's the first part Colossians of that? Colossians 3.15. Let the peace of God rule in let. your heart. Let. Yes. <laughs> you have to let it rule. Amen. Um, so God, I, I want to pray for you. God uh, created us. He, he's what the creator of heaven Thank and earth, you. but we forget that he created us, and we believe he created the heavens and the earth and can do all of these things, but he created us. He created us to breathe. Oh, he, crea- he gave us breath. He created us to move, right? We're healthy when we move. He created us to rest. But there's something powerful about the breath, because I believe that when God comes into you, that the breath of God yes, comes into amen. you and makes you new right. and gives you new Absolutely. life and makes you a new creation. 
And I'm telling you, I was walking through it just a few days ago, and a dear friend of mine told me, you've got to do this, do this. I don't even know if she realized she said it. She said, breathe in his peace. Let out fear. Amen. Breathe in peace. Exhale Thank fear. You, practice Thank that. You. I want y'all to practice that, and I want to pray for you. Um, it's a sound mind, and, and, and I would be remiss if I didn't tell you that if you don't know the Word of God, That's right. if I didn't have Scripture, thank God for my daddy. He made me memorize 100 Scriptures in the eighth grade. 100, and I had to take a test. I thought it was so bad back then. But you know what? When I can't, when I don't have the wherewithal to look up a, a word or I don't feel the Spirit like John said, it, sometimes it feels like it's fleeting. That's because we're human. But know the word of God so you can quote it over your life, so you so can good. stand on it. The word of God is powerful and it's sharp. So good. In Jesus' name, Lord, I pray Come on, over this congregation. Come on, stretch your hand up. And I thank you, Lord, that there is nothing impossible for you. There's nothing that we've done that exempts us from being free from fear in the name of Jesus. Lord, I pray there would be a revelation in this place where we would be able to know, God, that it's on us to let it go. It's on us to release it, God, and to be real vulnerable in that moment, to know that if we let it go, we're not sure what's going to happen next. But what I know, God, is that you came and you set Come me on. free when I let it go. Amen. So, Lord, I pray even in that there's no guilt. Maybe it's hard to let go. But, yes. God, we can stand you, on Jesus. your truth, and we can know it is not Thank your you, will for us to live in fear. So, Thank God, you, today we choose to breathe in peace over and Thank over you. and over, and we let go of fear in the name of Jesus Amen. constantly. We will practice. We will practice what you've taught us, God. We will live in this, God, and we will know that it's the only way to live, and that will be our new bar. Yes. That will be our Amen. new standard. God, that's where we Amen. choose to live the most of our lives is in your peace, in your love, according to your word, according to your spirit, according to your power, according to your love and your sound mind. Give us a sound mind, God, so that we can focus on you and fix our thoughts on you. Yeah. And know, God, that it's your will, again, for us to live free from fear. Thank you, Almighty God, for loving us so much. Thank you for not being mad at us. Thank yeah. you for showing us grace over and over. Thank you for showing us mercy every morning, new mercy. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for saving us from ourselves. In the name of Jesus, I pray this. Amen. Amen. Come on, everybody say amen. 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 I want you to be seated just for a moment. And I want to give you an opportunity for those that have, that have never, never started a relationship with Jesus Christ. Uh, this, is, this is something we do because we prepared this room for you to be here today and to, to have a, a, uh, an invitation and an introduction to Jesus, to his peace and his love, his power. And want to give you an opportunity to make a next step with him today. And if you've never asked Jesus to be Lord of your life, or maybe you have, but it's, it's stale. And we call them fresh starts around here because that's exactly what God gives you is a fresh start. In just a moment, we're going to pray a prayer together. And I want you to join me in praying that. And it's really simple. The scripture says it's simple. If you will believe in your heart and confess with your mouth that he, is, he, you're, he will save you. That's simple. And we always say this, if, if it was up to us, if I died for you, I'd make it hard for you to get saved, all right? You'd have to do a lot, but that's not how he did it. All you have to do is believe in your heart, confess with your mouth, and just say, Lord, I'm devoted to you. So I want you to pray this prayer with me. Say, Lord Jesus, thank you for your death, your burial, your resurrection, and the life that you've given me. Thank you for the power, the love, and the sound mind that I can hold on to today. Forgive me of my sins. Forgive me for believing in other things more than I believe in you. I pray that you would fill me with your Holy Spirit. And I want everything that comes with it. And I want to live with you beginning today. And overcoming eternal and abundant life in the mighty name of Jesus. And everybody say amen. Come on, let's celebrate with the folks today that made a decision for Jesus. Amen.